have it for those who can't join us tonight. Um, for all the families who are joining us for the first time, I will be starting today's session with a brief glimpse of uh, the schedule uh, for the next few weeks uh, of the orientation, family orientation. And then uh, I will cover very um, slightly or quickly um, the schedule for, for the 20th when you are here to move your student in. Um, and uh, those of you who've heard, heard it last time, just bear with me. And just so you know, we'll be starting every session the same way, um, going over uh, what to expect on, on move-in day and then uh, move over to our presenters uh, for the day. So with that, um, I'm going to share my screen with the schedule. Give me a second to find my schedule. There we are. Um, with that, um, what to expect on the 20th? Uh, we will uh, be sending every student a um, check-in time. It, the, the email for check-in time will be sent by housing at csum.edu. That's the email to be looking for. Uh, they will be given a, a window of time between 7 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Uh, uh, when you arrive on campus a few minutes before that, you'll be directed to park in parking lot O. Please do not feel the need to um, write all of this down. This will be made available to you in an email closer to your arrival. Once you are parked in lot O, you'll be directed to move. Um, you will be directed to go into our physical education and aquatic center, which is the adjacent building to where you'll be parked. Um, there you will have a welcome package for parents as well as students. Um, the students will then be directed into a large gym space where they will be uh, given a large tote bag, a tote box in which they will uh, collect all their uniform items, everything from PT gear to their uh, khakis, to their boiler suits, whatever it is that um, they, uh, that's part of their uniform issue will be given to them. And uh, meanwhile, families will be able to um, meet up with some of the people that you'll see virtually over these next few weeks. Uh, we will be there in person in case you have any last minute questions um, and we will be there to welcome you. Once that um, PIAC piece is done, you will take your box and go back to your car and move over, uh, drive over to your uh, residence hall. Uh, you will know which residence hall you're going into. It's either gonna be called Upper Residence Hall or McAllister Residence Hall. You'll drive up there, uh, except for the driver, everyone can hop off with your belongings. Um, there will be students there who will help you uh, unload your car and you'll be able to go into the room, settle in, and then uh, have some time on your hands depending on what your check-in time is. Uh, we will expect that all families and uh, the students are back um, at the quad. So please keep a map handy, which will be part of your packet that you get and meet uh, back at uh, the quad at two o'clock. Um, from two to 2.30, families will be invited for a short uh, reception. Uh, and from 2.30 to three, they will uh, be in our auditorium uh, for a welcome message from the president and our leadership. Uh, your students in the meantime will be getting uh, trained or um, kind of they'll be learning how to do formation. And um, shortly um, after your um, after your session with the president, you'll come out and um, you will have, uh, we'll have our capping ceremony. Um, capping ceremony is really kind of a tradition and very emotional kind of uh, a few minutes where you will be able to cap your student and it's just very fun. Uh, I will have tissue boxes there because you will need them. Um, after that, you will be able to take your student out for dinner. Uh, this should all kind of culminate uh, around um, four, if not a little bit sooner. 
Um, you'll be able to go to dinner, but we will need your students back by 6.30 on campus. They have a few things they need to do that evening. Uh, and also um, from there on, they have their whole, orient we have a whole orientation plan for, for them from uh, Monday through Friday. So parents will probably not, will not, not there's no probable, uh, will not be seeing their students um, after the 6.30 drop off. Um, so that's what the day is going to look like. You will have all these uh, details sent to you via email. And um, with that, um, I'm going to go very briefly into a couple of housekeeping things for today. Uh, please keep your uh, devices on mute. Uh, while the presenters are speaking. Uh, if you have any questions as you're listening to them, please type them in. When um, all the presenters have gone through their uh, presentations, I will read the questions to them and they can answer. If you're driving or for whatever reason you're not able to type, your questions in the last few minutes will open up the session uh, to unmute and be able to ask um, your questions verbally. Um, one thing I forgot to mention about the 20th, please wear comfortable shoes and dress in layers. Uh, weather can be really warm and then can get really cool in the evenings. So come prepared with layers and wear comfortable shoes. You're gonna be going from a spot to another uh, between parking and, and um, uh, res halls and all of that good stuff. So please plan to be comfortable. Um, you may do a um, quick errand run if you wish, but I just want all families to know that on Friday night, we will have an opportunity to drive the students to Target, which is not far from here, to actually um, have them buy whatever they think they're missing or would have liked to have brought and didn't. Um, so don't worry too much if you can't make that errand run uh, because we'll take them on Friday. With that, I would like to get um, our experts who are with us today started. And uh, how that'll work is uh, I'll call out on the first person and they will uh, popcorn over to the next person and so on and so forth. They'll share with you in the first round what their names are, how long they've been with the campus and what they do. In the second round, uh, they will share how uh, their role on campus interacts with your students. So you'll get an idea of um, what kind of resources uh, students have uh, when they're on, on campus. And finally, they'll come around and share any details that pertain to families and they feel are import of importance to you. After that, we'll open it up for our questions and answers. So. Um, presenters, don't forget to popcorn to the next colleague, and I'll get um, the, the talk started with Anjali. Anjali, I see you first on my screen. Hi, everyone. So I have a couple slides to share with you. Can anyone, everyone see that? Okay. So my name is Angela Acosta. I am the part-time health educator at the Student Health Center. I've been here for eight years. I'm in charge of health programming, um, including being an advisor to our A-team, which Vanita has named so lovingly, our peer health educator program. I hire, I train, I help coordinate their outreach programs. Um, if you would like to contact me, here is my um, email. And I do want to take this opportunity to plug in a resource um, for our Keel Holler families. And that is um, collegeparentsmatter.org. And it talks about the it talks about communication tips to talk to your students about alcohol. Our alcohol policy on campus is that there is no alcohol allowed on campus unless it's approved by the president's cabinet or the senior administration for any special functions. This includes any off-campus activities sponsored by Cal Maritime or any clubs or organizations. So just a summary of those tips. Um, 
number one, don't be afraid to talk to your student, your cadet about alcohol. You know, talk to them about like if they have if they have a plan, if they do decide to drink and if they have a buddy system. Um, number two, consequences on heavy drinking and getting caught under the age, if they get caught um, under the age of 21. Um, and then there's also resources at the Student Health Center for your students to get help. Um, number two, families still play a major role in influencing their college students' behavior. Even though that they are 18, you don't want to underestimate your influence. Your voice still matters. Number three, um, when you do talk to your cadet, you want to minimize your um, distractions, turn off your phone, turn off your TV, try not to multitask so that you can fully focus on the message. And then last, um, you want to check in regularly, regularly with your cadet over the next four to five years that there are they are at Cal Maritime. So this this shouldn't be a one and done deal. This should be a regular uh, communicate regular open communication with your students. So here's the QR code. I highly, highly, highly recommend you look it over and check it out. And then I would like to pass it on to our peer health educators, Andy, Ambria, and Amanda. Hi, um, my name is Ambria and I'm one of the lead peer health educators um, doing the events and outreach. Um, so we put on programs and uh, small events to give out resources and other fun uh, tips that are engaging for uh, students on campus. I am currently a um, third year global studies and maritime affairs student, um, but you guys will probably also, or at least the students will probably also see me as one of the RHOs in upper res. Um, I'm also on the AS board for global studies and um, oceanography. And so yeah, um, you'll probably see me around and uh, Peer Health is really cool. And I'd like to pass it to Amanda. Hello everybody, my name is Amanda Carvalho. I'm going into my third year as an international business and logistics major, and I'm also getting a minor in law. So I'm one of the other lead peer health educators with Ambria and I focus on social media. So my goal for social media this year um, with Pure Health is to basically give all the information we do during events on social media so that uh, all cadets can go back and look at that as well as parents. Um, and you can also see everything we're putting out um, there on our Instagram. So if you follow maritime.phe, you'll be able to see all of that. Um, I wear many hats on campus, just like Ambria. We do pretty much the same thing. Um, I will also be one of the RHOs and uppers. So all of the freshmen that are coming in, they will be working with us a lot. Um, I am the Senator for uh, MTLM, so Marine Transportation and International Business for Associated students and I'm also a business tutor and writing tutor on campus so I'm all around and I'm super excited to meet everybody that's coming in this year I'll see them all during a week and I'll pass it to Andreas you're muted by the way <laughs> thank you for letting me know <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Andres Ayala Serrano. I'm a new cadet to the campus. This last uh, spring was my very first, um, what's it called, a semester? I'm a transferred in junior. And um, let's see, what I do on campus. I'm a peer health educator. So my passion is to help as many individuals that come to me um, if they need resources like, uh, hey, I would like to talk to vent to someone, they could talk to us, they could talk to CAPS, uh, which is an amazing, um, what's it called, uh, place to go for finding resources and like mental health and talk to our uh, specialists, our therapists. Um, one of them, his name is Dr. Wallace, which he's in this meeting. Um, also, I also have, different hats, just like Ambria and Amanda on campus. Um, I'm the Straight Gate Alliance uh, Secretary Treasurer. 
Um, and also I am the RHO for the current summer program. So we have lots of students who stay over the summer and they come to me they, if they need any other resources like the food pantry that we have here, um, or they just need uh, places to say, places to see, they just come to me and um, I just help them out a lot. And that's just a little bit about me. Um, and, and now I would like to pass it on to- uh, These are, I just wanted to plug in our Instagram and then just a couple, if Ambria or Amanda wants to talk about our, the programs that we offer during the year. Can we do the introductions first, oh. um, Anjali, and then come back because we have rounds. So All thank right, you. All um, right, thank you. Okay, um, I would like to pass it on to Dr. Wallace. Thanks, Andres. I'm Dr. Ian Wallace, Director of Counseling here at Cal Maritime. I've been here uh, for about 10 years. And let me just back up and say, welcome, everybody. Glad you're here. Happy to share this information. Um, yeah, I supervise a small team of licensed counselors. I'll say more about that later, as well as our confidential advocate. On that, I'll pass it over to my colleague, Rodrigo. I think you're muted, Rodrigo. Um, we still can't hear you. Let's um, let me pass it to Craig while Rodrigo gets his audio working. Hello, <clears throat> thank you, Ian, and yes, welcome to all of the parents. And my name is Craig Dawson. I am responsible for environmental health and safety. Uh, the de designated person ashore for the ship and also the Cleary director. And so in those roles, I cover a lot of safety areas, both on the ship and ashore, and am a resource both for faculty, staff, as well as your cadets. And I will pass it back to Rodrigo if he's got his mic working. All right, then we'll go to Charles Ford. Good evening. My name is Charles Ford. Um, well, welcome to Cal Maritime. We'll see you guys soon. Um, I've been here at Cal Maritime for about 10 years. I'm a corporal here and um, we're here for everyone's safety and uh, we'll go a, a little more elaborate about what the police department does for our students, staff and faculty and our, our guests on campus soon. And who's next here? Rodrigo? Get the mic going. We still can't hear you, Rodrigo. Why don't we, um, Rodrigo, keep working on that, uh, if you will, please. Um, do we have any other members of Cal Maritime who have joined us? I think that's our team. Um, I'll push it back to Dr. Wallace to share um, his interactions and role uh, in terms of students. And then uh, why don't you, Dr. Ian, please continue with any information you have for, for uh, families. Okay, sure. Let me briefly share my screen here. Excuse me, let me, oops. Sorry, I'll get this prepared. So I'll be speaking on behalf, not just of the counseling center, but also of the health center. Dr. Grace Chow, our director of uh, the medical director of the health center is unable today, unable to be with us. So I will run through some slides right now um, on her behalf, and then I'll enter into the counseling. So first and foremost, um, this health and counseling are integrated. We have a physical new, a new center that we're happy to share. Uh, students will be very impressed. Um, is more modern and contemporary medical center, and so we are located in the shared space. So first and foremost, the website here is available. I'll post this in the link after my remarks. Um, the number one thing way to reach us is really the 1170 phone number there as well as stopping in, in terms of scheduling appointments or doing drop-ins. We do have after hours phone uh, that's available to call as well. Um, as I mentioned, it's important to know that the, the health services we provide are integrated, not just mental, 
uh, physical, but also spiritual. And we tr really take a holistic approach to providing, you know, holistic care. Then it also includes connections with other social, you know, support services on campus, whether it's career services, peer health educators, police services, you name it, we try to be uh, comprehensive in that respect. A little bit about the hours and appointments. So first and foremost, we're open Monday to Friday, uh, typically 8.30 to 5, close from 1 to 2 um, daily, and then Tuesdays from 4 to 5. Counseling services are basically the same. It's important to note, and I'll mention the drop-in hour, two to three every day. No appointment needed, just drop right in. Um, and for the medical appointments, uh, drop-ins are typically available um, most days. Uh, busy times of the year, appointments may be a couple days out, but um, typically drop-ins are available. So again, they are accommodated. Um, it's important to know about the cost. So, you know, you probably may be aware that student health fee is a required fee that all you know, students pay um, that provides the service, the primary care services that we provide. Um, so there's no additional cost when a student enters the student health center, whether that's for a medical concern or a psychological concern. There are times when referrals to specialists, uh, whether it's through one's insurance or other types of sources, may require um, external um, prov you know, provision of care as well as cost, but the majority, we're talking 90 to 95% of most concerns are handled at the Student Health Center. And it's also important to know that the services are confidential, both on the medical and, you know, psychological side. And this is protected by federal as well as state law. Um, so students have rights to privacy. As parents, it's important to know that there are, you can negotiate this and kind of have a release of information or other types of access to um, confidential records or information, um, but typically in most cases, students um, who are legal adults do have primary um, uh, rights to privacy and confidentiality. I mean, again, this is just a quick overview. If there are questions, feel free to drop those in the chat or reach out to us later. We also do pride ourselves on being inclusive and being attentive to issues of diversity, equity, inclusion. This includes um, in primary care as well as in counseling. And so a lot of our efforts are about um, reducing barriers to care, increasing access, um, destigmatizing mental health, and kind of and just generally kind of being in, um, inclusive in our approach. Some of the services include from a primary care, we have a nurse practitioner and a physician on staff. I'll talk about the counseling a little bit more in a moment. There are many medications. We have a small pharmacy to be able to provide those. There's orthopedic supplies, health promotion, as Anjali alluded to in the peer health educators. Physical exams are provided at the health center. Lab and x-ray is provided off-site. Vaccinations uh, such as the flu vaccine and basics are provided at the health center. Some additional primary care services, uh, common illnesses and injuries. Uh, again, number of mental health concerns, men's and women's health including reproductive health. Uh, chronic conditions are managed and assisted. Um, those are within the purview of the health center. Sports physicals, annual exams, Coast Guard exams, all included as well. Nutrition counseling advice, travel advice when it comes to cruise, as well as international experience and derm or dermatological concerns as well. <clears throat> I'm counseling, I'm gonna skip over this because I'll cover that on the, sh I'll share my screen uh, for the website in a moment. And then some additional, well, that's kind of counseling as well. And this is counseling as well too. So one of the key points is that counseling does not prevent licensure. We always try to emphasize that. So if your student is on a licensed track program, um, counseling in and of itself is not a barrier. I can speak more to that in a moment. Okay, so that's my quick overview. Again, I wanna refer, refer you to Dr. Chow um, and I'll pull that up in a moment for the, sorry, let me stop sharing and pull up the website and show you where you can reach out to her um, if needed. Let me share the screen back. Okay, so let me give, so again, I am a um, director of the counseling services, the mental health services that we provide to students um, through the student health fees. I'm a licensed psychologist, been here for 10 years, and supervise a brief, a team, a small team of counselors. So let me go over, this is our website here. It's all up to date. I want you to check it out. Lots of good information in terms of the hours and appointments. There's a portal that the students can access here and 988 for emergencies is, our, is the national lifeline. Let me just jump forward um, and tell you about us and go to the staff. So here you can see my bio um, and I'll skip over that, but I wanna introduce you to Marie. 
Ekmek Jin, who's a licensed professional clinical counselor. She's been with us for just one year. And Miriam Anthony is a licensed mar or a marriage and family therapist in training, who actually graduated from Cal Maritime and sailed um, with a, and maintains her mariner's license um, currently. So she's got great expertise. Um, we're a small staff, but we see upwards of 25% of students every year. Um, so just a quick overview again about us. Oh, let me come back. There are some some things, I'll point to this part, the online assessment. So if a student is interested in going through different mental health assessments themselves, they can take these anonymously and they can gather individualized feedback that may um, be insightful and help them kind of increase their awareness. Um, some other pieces about our services, and I'll just skip over here. We offer individual counseling. We offer group counseling. We offer in-person counseling as well as telehealth counseling. Again, Monday to Friday, eight to five, um, and two to three is the daily walk-in, um, which is also virtual. So it's, I guess, drop-in is the better term. We do some group counseling as well. Um, let me scroll back down. You can see here, I'm not gonna go to all these sites, but just want you to know, we do a number of things. You can look at our virtual services here. We do events and workshops. Um, there's an archive of data and information. We have an emphasis on diversity, equity, inclusion you can look at there. We also have self-help information for students, um, including suicide prevention activities, which is a priority among the Counseling Center. And then um, I guess lastly, I want to end on resources for parents and supporters. So given your concerns, there's a list of uh, tips here about how to support your student uh, from afar or in communication. And so I won't go over all these tips, but I just want to say they're there, as well as some other contact information for different campus resources. On that note, um, again, I'll post some information in the chat. Feel free to reach out to me or ask questions afterward. I don't want to take up too much time, but thank you for allowing me to share that. Thank you, Dr. Wallace. I just wanted to let all the families know that um, Dr. Chow, uh, as um, as Dr. Wallace shared, her information is available on, on uh, the web pages uh, for Health Center. And also, uh, she will be available for any communication you'd like uh, on the 20th uh, while your students picking up their uniforms at the campus fair. So um, you, you'll get a chance to meet with her. We'll move it to Officer Ford. All right. Well, let's first start off with uh, how to contact us. So um, if you're on campus, if there's ever an emergency, dial 911. Um, if there's a non-emergency, we have, uh, it's going to be 707-654-1176. Um, and then our email, uh, a generic email, is going to be police department at csu.edu, uh, csum.edu. So that's our email to get to the police department. So um, we have, we currently have eight police officers on patrol. We have four port security officers here on campus. And um, our department handles all patrol, investigation, crime prevention education, emergency preparedness, and all law enforcement duties on the campus. We're here 24 uh, seven for everyone here. So, it's primarily staff, faculty, cadets, and our guests here on campus. Uh, we primarily patrol on campus and one mile off campus. We work frequently with uh, Vallejo Police Department and the Solano Sheriff's Office um, for assistance on, on things. Um, so we do a lot of crime prevention, a lot of alcohol awareness, uh, mental health issues. That, that's the big one right now. Um, so just talk, talk to your, your, uh, your cadet, talk to your student, make sure you have clear communications, um, talk to them about the, the alcohol, because that's usually the issue we have with first time students here on campus, um, during the weekends. Um, so talk to them, Hey, we have zero tolerance for alcohol here on, on campus. So, um, let them know that up front. And, uh, another thing is we really pride ourselves on response times on here campus. We're a small campus. We have maybe 82 acres here, and we're usually on scene within four minutes uh, of a call. So it's much quicker than the average uh, law enforcement agency. Um, so if you guys have any questions, let us know. We're here for you guys. 
Um, let me send to next. Could I ask a quick question for yes. you to share with them? Yep. Um, and could you talk about uh, escorting students when needed and also yeah. parking, please? Yep. So parking, we'll start with parking. So unfortunately, first time students on campus, they're not allowed to get a, uh, a permit to park on campus for a semester. They can purchase a daily parking pass. It's a daily parking pass. They'll have to do that every single day they park on campus. So we really encourage first time students not to park on campus if they have to bring a vehicle on campus, Country Lane is City of Vallejo. Country Lane's just outside the campus here. So you could park your vehicle there if you wish. Um, we don't encourage it. So we'd really rather have you leave your vehicles at home. Um, I'm sorry, the second question? Um, could you talk about your escort program? Key escort program. Yeah. Yep. So anytime, if any cadet wants an escort on campus, for a safety escort, uh, give us a call on the non-emergency number, the 1176 number, and we'll send an officer or a port security officer to that location and uh, transport them. Um, transport them there. Same thing for injuries. If we have cadets with injuries, we'll do escorts for that as well. Thank you. Yep. Craig. Yes. Hi again. And <clears throat> to catch up. Uh, I've been at Cal Maritime for three years, um, although I've been in the CSU system doing safety for a little over 25 years now. Um, and my roles um, work most directly with faculty and staff, um, making sure that we have all the appropriate safety programs in place and the proper equipment and people know how to safeguard our cadets. And that's both in the academic classes as well as on the ship. And then as far as uh, with the ship, the designated person ashore, well, we have a huge benefit here at Cal Maritime while cruise is happening. Uh, part of Dr. Wallace's team is on the ship, both on the medical and the uh, psychological and counseling side. And so there's a lot of support through them and the Commandant's office, but uh, my name and number is posted all over the ship and I provide uh, the ability for uh, cadets or staff and faculty for that matter to reach out beyond the ship if they have any concerns and they don't feel comfortable with talking with somebody on the ship about it to give them another source uh, and another avenue. And there's other roles that go on with the, the DPA, but uh, not as much that affect the uh, the actual cadets. And then I work very closely with police services and with counseling and other groups. When it comes to the Clery program, which is the annual security report that is posted on our website um, that lists various, uh, quite a lot of, of programs that we have in safety information, as well as statistics for the last three years on certain crimes that may or may not have happened on campus or in the immediate area. And uh, of course, I'm involved as well in emergency responses and um, helping on any type of, of disasters or incidents that do occur. Most of my direct work with the cadets is uh, I often have opportunities for uh, student employment and as well as internships. And so uh, I do have the, the fortune to work with a number of, of really great individuals through that. And then my contact information is everywhere on the web page. So cell numbers, office phone numbers, I'm easy to track down. So I'm always open and, and glad to, to speak with folks to try to address any concerns. And I will bounce it back over to Angelique. Hi, so how I interact with students. Um, I interact with our peer health educators and I would like to to give it up to them to let it, let them know about their programs. 
I'll go first. So um, as a peer health educator, we're constantly interacting with people. Um, we try our best to have as many events as we can uh, fitting in our own schedules, but uh, we do a lot of tabling. And when we do tabling, we actually are able to interact with a bunch of people. We tend to do it during the lunch-ish time when a lot of people don't have classes. Um, like one of the events we did was giving out flowers for Valentine's Day. And what people did with those flowers is they ended up putting them on other people's cars or giving them to professors or giving them to each other. And that, you just walked around campus and you saw everybody have flowers at their hands and handing it to different people. So um, that's just an example of an event, but it also shows how our tabling events are able to hit so many people on campus. I don't know, Amber, you might want to talk about a different one that we've done. Yeah, um, if, Angelie, you have the slide that you had at the end. Yeah, let me share it. Um, so it has some photos of some of, like, our most popular events. Um, one of them is Fluffy Therapy, um, where we have dogs come on campus, and um, they're there for a few hours, and they're usually out on the lawn around dinner time and students can go up and um, pet the dogs, chat with like the dog handlers. And that's always like a favorite of people because you don't really get to, you know, be at home with your animals and stuff. Um, and then our like most popular event that we have like each semester is called Sex in the Dark where we have um, different people from different areas of campus and in the community um, come talk about like sexual health and healthy relationships with students. So last time in this picture are some of our panelists, which include um, Marie from uh, CAPS, Dr. Chow from the Health Center. Um, one of the students from the Gay Street Alliance, I'm pretty sure. Um, and then people from Solano County Health. Uh, and so we have people, uh, we have, this is our most popular uh, event where students get to come and we have glow sticks and candy and prizes. And it's just a lot of fun. And it's a way to get students engaged and, um, you know, excited about health and things like that. It's it's also just a really um, safe place for people to talk about what they feel like they can't with each other. So we've had some really good questions, especially um, education about STD, STI with these professionals. Um, they even gave out free tests. We give out free condoms. It's honestly just being able to educate people on a topic they might be scared to talk about um, otherwise, whether it be with parents or with each other. Um, and then that last tabling we did there is when we do when it's really hot and it's uh, frozen yogurt. That's another big hit. Um, and we kind of do that just to remind people that Pure Health exists, but also like it's okay to just have a frozen yogurt and take a break from classes. So um, our the biggest goal is to make events on campus so that people don't go off campus and, you know, get hurt or do that type of, you know, worse stuff than what you can do on campus. And also just reminding people how important it is to focus on your mental health, your physical health, your sexual health, um, even financial health. We have uh, financial things we do as well. Uh, so we just do uh, focus on all aspects of health and a lot of people really enjoy our events. Andreas, if you wanted to add anything. You're muted again. <laughs> Oh my gosh, thank you. Um, so the Sex in the Dark was definitely my first peer health uh, event that I participated in. It was phenomenal. We got to see lots of cadets that had questions that you think, like, like I'm assuming that you think they might know, but the questions that were just coming our way, they were so educational. Um, some were a little silly, but you know, there's never a wrong question when it comes to education, when it comes to sex. So um, it, it referred to like different genders, different sex, sex or orientation, like uh, um, what's it called? My fellow peer was saying uh, about like STDs and um, all that like contraception stuff, con contraceptive. I think I'm saying that right, wrong or, <laughs> but it, it was, it's, it's a phenomenal event. And um, the more students we get involved, the more they get educated on it and uh, being a peer health educator is very important to me, especially with my fellow peers, because we like to help students a lot feel more welcome to our campus. So I also want to plug our peer health, the peer health and Instagram. 
Um, if you can like and follow, you can see their what they're up to, what um, any upcoming events. Um, some there's some health promotion on there, so I invite you to to follow the Peer Health Educator um, Instagram. Okay. Um, thank, thank you so much. Uh, I would really appreciate the um, cadets coming on and uh, talking about their experience and giving families a chance to get a glimpse of uh, the possibilities of involvement um, once they're outside the classroom, once your students are outside the classroom. I see Rodrigo uh, has found his way back. Um, Rodrigo, do you want to um, pick it up? Um, so Rodrigo, I, I, I'll just share very quickly, Rodrigo is um, a member of the health center team and we invited him uh, specifically to share any details um, that would be helpful in terms of uh, applying for a health insurance waiver. Uh, uh, why don't, I oh, there you are. Yeah, so I found a way. So. Yeah, uh, Bonita, uh, like you say, uh, I'm the health administrator assistant in the Administrative Health Center, um, uh, working directly with Dr. Chow um, uh, with the CAPS uh, team uh, to provide some um, help to prepare all the all the forms for the students, uh, help with insurances, and also to have all uh, everything ready for the cruise, for all the medical equipment and medication, Everything is required for all the cadets and the staff um, to have a safe um, cruise. So, any questions related to the to the health forms? Any questions related to the to the health insurance? Definitely, you are free to to contact me. Uh, you can call to the Sewell Health Center, or you can uh, send an email to the Sewell Health Center, or to my personal email uh, in the in the in time. So any questions about that, feel free to, to ask. Thank you, Rodrigo. Um, it's 6.15 and usually this is the time we request all our families to um, get their questions in chat so we could read them out and uh, the appropriate presenter could respond. I know there was a question earlier uh, about um, what was our crime rate um, and whether or not um, uh, there was any suggestions about uh, safety of bicycles uh, or electrical bicycles. Um, could uh, Officer yeah. Ford talk about that? Yep. Um, so we do uh, sometimes get bicycle thefts on campus. So we recommend if your student is bringing a bicycle on campus, you get a good quality bicycle lock. Uh, we really recommend the, the U-locks. Um, get those for the bicycles. Um, the crime rate, uh, our crime rate on campus is, is pretty low. Um, I mean, compared to the city of Vallejo, um, our officers are very proactive um, patrolling campus. And um, one unique thing about campus here is um, all the cadets, we wear uniforms on campus. So it's very easy to see um, someone on campus who's not a student. Uh, we are an open campus, so anyone can walk on campus, but our, our officers are very proactive in, uh, and talking to people, doing a consensual encounter and see what's going on um, if someone's on campus. So we're out and about 24-7, uh, uh, very proactive. So if you have any questions with us, um, let us know. And um, I'll, I'll put a uh, link on the um, chat with regards to our crime stats. And we have a crime log too, so you can check our um, all of our reports too. I'll put it on there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there. Um... Someone requested uh, gym hours. Uh, those are available on our website as well, but I'd like for you to hold on to those questions about the gym and our athletic program for August 15 when we have the AD on uh, on uh, on the call and we're going to talk through uh, all the op possible sense of belonging opportunities. So hold that thought. Um, the next question I see is, what is transportation like in the city to get to BART, Amtrak, any buses that come to campus? 
I said, Ford, do you want to take that? Oh, yeah. So there's a bus stop off of uh, Sandy Beach, which is right in front of Maritime North. That's the closest bus stop to our campus. Um, I know a lot of people use Uber. So Ubers come all the time on campus. Um, so you can do that. And um, the Vallejo Ferry, if so on the weekends, if people want to go to the city, uh, they could take an Uber from here to the Vallejo Transit Center, or I'm sorry, to the um, ferry building, and then take the ferry from here to San Francisco. It's roughly a 45 minute ferry, ferry ride over there. So it's kind of fun to get away on the weekends. It's fairly close. Uh, but I recommend using an Uber. Um, I don't recommend riding bikes from here uh, into Vallejo at all. Um, we do have a nice um, bridge path across the Carquinas Bridge, which is nice to uh, either go on a jog or go um, on a bicycle ride. Um, I recommend doing that and then using our gym here on campus, but we don't really encourage to, uh, going out in, in Vallejo, walking around or uh, riding your bicycles on in Vallejo. Ambria, you wanted yeah. to share something? I would say as a student, um, not a lot of freshmen do have cars. And if you do, um, it's definitely a great thing to have, but it's also a great way to make friends who are upperclassmen, get to know more people on campus. Um, a lot of upperclassmen know the struggle of freshmen not being able to drive. Um, and so they'll, um, you, if you find some good people, you can definitely get rides. It's also a great way just to get to be connected in campus um, because I mean, everyone knows the struggle, so. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, there is a question, if our student has a in health insurance waiver, can uh, he not get services at the health center? So either Rodrigo or Dr. Wallace, could you respond to that? Absolutely, I'm happy to respond. Um, with a waiver or without, students have access to the student health center. It is separate and paid for by the fees. Uh, student health insurance is required, so the waiver has to do with that requirement. So access to the student health serve, student health center um, is available to all students as required through the fee, separate from the insurance requirement. Um, next uh, question is, uh, is counseling and therapy services free? Also, is there any assistance for students with food allergies and, and uh, maybe in need of uh, EpiPen or any allergy medication assistance? I can answer the first part and I'll pass to Rodrigo. Counseling, as I mentioned in the chat, counseling services are free, um, no session limits. Uh, typically weekly or bi-weekly basis is what most counseling is offered. The average number of sessions per year, per again, 25% of students seek counseling in any given year is approximately four to five sessions. Uh, but many students come for a single session or two, and others come for, for multiple. As it pertains to allergies, let me pass that to Rodrigo. Yeah, from, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. For the, for the food allergies, uh, definitely um, when the students or the cadets who meet the, the, the health forms, we need to be sure that, that that's, it's uh, mentioned in the form. And according to that, uh, usually all the, all the cadets, all the, all the students, they bring their own um, EpiPen. In the case that they, they require, they need to bring their own. If they know that they have some uh, issues with allergies, uh, they, they they need to bring their own uh, epi, EpiPen. Or also, in the case that they need some, um, when there's no around, they, they don't have their own EpiPen, they can go uh, anytime to the uh, student health uh, center, and we can definitely see them and treat them uh, in a short period of time without any problem. Thank you. Um, so for the question about the 20th, what is the time uh, when you can take your student to dinner? You'll probably be done uh, before four or around four o'clock and we would need the students to return to campus at 6.30. So you'll have a good two and a half hour time window uh, to be away. Um, is there um, any phone safety emergency button uh, through campus for security and safety needs? That's a good Greg question maybe? Uh, we've got emergency blue lights throughout campus. Um, so if you push those buttons, it's going to go directly to our police dispatch, who will dispatch an officer to that location. And each blue light on campus is geotagged, so we know the location of where that's been activated from. And there was one question about parking for first year students. There is a waiver a student can apply for. They're very limited. 
and you need specific reasons for why you need a vehicle on campus. And if you call our uh, parking coordinator at, I put it in the uh, chat here, it's 707-654-1179. You can call and ask specific questions about how to get a waiver. Um, and I see Amanda's note there, which is um, kind of important uh, to um, visit. Uh, if a student who's an uh, incoming cadet now or incoming student, they bring a car, they can always uh, park uh, on city streets, uh, we have limited parking uh, available on campus, so we do not. We prefer to not give out uh, spots um, on the lots that are on campus, but they can park on city streets. And as Amanda pointed out, they're not patrolled. It is less safe to park on the street and. Many of our students park there. It's actually called Freshman Hill, right? Um, and um, there is not unlimited space there. So the more students who bring cars, uh, the busier that space gets. And uh, it can sometimes be difficult uh, to find a spot. Uh, and their safety of their vehicle is you know, also a consideration. Um, and there's a reason behind um, requesting students to not bring cars. It's not just a matter of uh, parking spot availability. It also has to do with uh, get, keeping the students involved in what's going on on campus. If they have a car, they have a higher tendency to want to go home if they are in driving distance or go do stuff away from campus. And sometimes safety could be an issue. Sometimes keeping them on campus to become more engaged on campus um, with campus programming. Uh, for those reasons, a lot of schools will um, discourage or or uh, even ban, I shouldn't say ban, but really discourage students from uh, incoming freshmen from bringing, bringing vehicles. So um, there's a little bit of reason why we, we recommend that your student not have a car. Um, <clears throat> we recently submitted the physical, uh, I take it this is the health physical, would someone contact us to let us know our student is cleared to come to campus? Um, can anyone from health services respond to that? Yes, uh, we, re we receive the, the, the health form. So it's on the review. It's pending by, by Dr. Child review. And after that, we're gonna be able to, uh, to see if there's any, any additional documentation or any, anything is missing in the form, but definitely we will receive the form just waiting for Dr. Child review. Uh, we're reaching to a 625, and as promised, I want to give anyone who has not been able to type their question for any reason and would like to unmute and um, ask their question verbally, please feel free to do that. Um, and in the meantime, um, I also want to make a request of everyone here. Amy, yes, uh, last week's session is was recorded. I just need to get some time to put it on our webpage. Uh, I promise I'll get that done in the next couple of days, this particular, today's and the last session. And they will be updated and you could find them under the Keel Hall, uh, on the Keelhaller family page at csystem.edu. Um, I just included uh, a Microsoft form link um, and it didn't quite move in as a link. Uh, if you uh, could fill out that um, form for us, we are trying to capture families who um, are who are sending us legacy students uh, and what is the best way to contact uh, families uh, if they have multiple emails um, and want us to be aware of them. Uh, please fill out this form that I just uh, attached the link to it. Uh, we really, really appreciate that. Just trying to capture all the information possible for families. Um, I, I did um, also earlier share our Facebook page link. So if you haven't joined the Kilala Family Facebook page, please uh, join us. And uh, there are a couple of questions that um, group process asks you, please fill those out. Without those um, answers, I cannot uh, 
include you into the group. So please, um, or add you to the group. So please fill out those uh, questions. And Vanita, if I could just add one plug for mm -hmm. accessibility and disability services, perhaps mm -hmm. you're covering this elsewhere, but it is relevant to health services and counseling. Um, I'll put a link here. So specifically, um, students who may need accommodations of different sorts, whether that's in the classroom, whether that's for mental health reasons or physical health reasons, um, there is a process by uh, submitting supporting documents and applying for those accommodations. The healthcare providers, both again, mental health and physical health um, in the health center can do evaluations and provide recommendations for accommodations as part of that process. So that link is there, just wanted folks to know about that. Thank you so much, Dr. Wallace. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, looks like we have a question from Brady. Brady, you could go ahead and unmute to ask your question. Um, I wasn't familiar with the student health form. This is my first kid going to college. So we have to fill out some health form requirement to ha ha allow him access to the campus. Um, so we, it, it's not so much to allow access. Uh, it's part of our um, requirement for licensure programs and that just extends to all the students. Um, and okay. it's available. They have, your student should have received uh, information on where that form resides and how to fill it out and get it to us. Uh, it should be fairly simple. It's not anything that there's, there should be concern around. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Do we have any other um, questions that are pending? Did I miss anything in writing? Please unmute and ask. We're right at 6.30. I can, I can respond to the latest question. Do education accommodations affect licensure? And the short answer is no, that education accommodations in and of themselves are not a barrier to licensure. It is important to know that the accommodations that may be afforded in the classroom uh, through um, classes at Cal Maritime may not necessarily be available for U.S. Coast Guard exams or other types of Coast Guard um, specific requirements. But as a barrier to licensure, the short answer is no. Um, are there conditions or medications? Yes, there are some um, factors that can be typically not barriers, but they can provide require additional documentation. If you have specific questions, um, I'm happy to respond to those. The website has additional information too. So it is 6.30 and I want to be very uh, respectful of everyone's time. Um, and I am not, I, the questions have slowed down. So I think we're in a good place. And I hope that all of you will join us uh, again on Thursday. So if there's anything pending, please hold on to that question and we can address it next time we meet. Uh, I want to end our hour with gratitude uh, for our presenters. Thank you everyone. And um, as always, uh, I want to ap applaud the families who have brought up their students um, uh, so well and they are um, successful in going to college. So please give yourselves um, some grace and, and enjoyment from bringing your student to their next chapter. So thank you again very much. Uh, for being with us and uh, we'll see you on Thursday 5 30 same place same link and um, with, with more information okay thank you bye-bye thank you sure thank you thank guys you for have a good night me. you too bye, bye. thank you everyone bye-bye